Did you know that this, the Flashpoint R2 Zoom Lithium Ion X, is actually the most popular flash according to Adorama's website, but for the rest of this video, to keep it shorter, I'm just gonna call it the Flashpoint Zoom X. It is a round-headed speed light. Maybe that's why it's popular. And it comes with the kit. I mean, it's not compulsory, it's an optional extra, but apparently these two are the most popular flash combo on Adorama. Right, well, that's gonna be fun because I'm gonna test it with some fun kit it's probably not really designed for and we're going to put it through its paces in a range of different lighting scenarios so for now let's get the most popular flash on a light stand let's get no it's on camera let's start with it on camera let's get a model in let's get shooting to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sophie. Sophie is going to be the model for this photo shoot. But before we get into the really interesting, exciting lighting, let's start with something a bit more basic because the Zoom X is supposed to be an on-camera dedicated flash. It's set up to do that. So let's see if it actually performs. I've just got it set to TTL plus one because we have a large white wall. I'm going to take a few photos like this. Sophie, are you ready? Let's see what happens. Here we go. And well, the results are perfectly okay. Exactly what I would expect from on-camera flash, which is where the accessory pack comes in because you actually get some pretty good accessories. One thing you find with the round head is it's actually lacking a few things that a square head would have. So there's no pop out diffusing panel or pop out bounce card, which is why probably everybody gets the accessory pack with it because diffusing panel and bounce card are included in the pack. And the bounce card is doing exactly what it's designed to do, bouncing light off of the white wall of the studio and giving us much softer light on Sophie. Pretty good. And just for good fun, let's finish off with the barn doors, which aren't much use as barn doors, but if you close them right down, you should be able to make a thinner beam of light. And because it's magnetic, I can spin it around. So this is actually quite good. I've changed a few things around. So first of all, you'll notice the flash is no longer attached to the camera. It is off camera flash because that is so much more exciting, or at least it opens up more opportunities. And then I need something to transmit to the flash. So I'm using the Flashpoint transmitter. There are lots of transmitters that can work with the Zoom X flash. Really, it's a matter of choosing one that you particularly like. The flash and the transmitter both support TTL. So I could use TTL flash, but I like the consistency of manual flash and then there are my camera settings. So I've dialed in 250th of a second, which is my flash sync speed for my camera. Your mileage may vary. F5.6, which is middle of the road aperture. ISO 200, the native ISO for my particular camera. And the most important picture is no flash firing gives me this, no picture, which means that I have complete control of the room lights in this environment. One other thing you can change is the spread of the light, the zoom. So I've set the zoom to its wide 24 millimeter end. Let's take a photo and see how the light comes out like this. Okay, Sophie, here we go. And what we get on a nice wide shot is a nice wide spread with soft edges. Yeah, I mean, that's quite nice but I can change it and I can change it from here. So if I want to have a more tighter beam of light, I can actually zoom it in. Now my transmitter says 200 millimeters, but I know that the flash limits it just at just over 100 millimeters. And yeah, it is a little bit tighter. But if I want that real tight beam of light, I'm gonna reach for some of the accessories from the accessory kit. The two accessories I'm interested in are the grid and the snoot. Now I did try just the grid on its own and the results were, well, just a little bit disappointing. There's not enough of a difference for me to really want to use it on its own. But if I combine it with the little silicon snoot, well, that really will make a difference. We have a much, much tighter beam of light. Sophie being an expert model knows to look towards the light as well. And I think with a little bit of tweaking, we can probably get a quite a good picture here. And the tweak is to get Sophie to sit on a chair, which when you say it out loud, doesn't sound that exciting, but it gives something for Sophie to interact with. It means that she's a little bit further away from the light, which means the light has a bit more room to spread. And all in all, it should make for some really good photos. Sophie, are you ready? Okay, let's try a few pictures like this.
This really thin beam of light is very directional, so even a small shift in the position of the Flashpoint Zoom X will be enough to change how much light hits the background and how bright that becomes, and it's always a good idea to mix things up. Of course, before too long, you're going to find the limitations of a bare flash a little bit too much, and you're going to want to use some light modifiers, and that can lead you on to this, the Hexapop 24-inch from Glow. It is possibly my favorite small portable softbox ever because it is just so light, and it's compatible with the OTA flash system, which means that the Zoom X just fits inside this little adapter. The problem with the Hexapop is it's a single layer softbox. There's no inner diffuser. And normally I would flick out the outer diffusing panel of the flash to compensate. But of course, there isn't one on this flash, which is why you probably got the accessory kit because you can pop the diffusing dome on there and that will spread the light around the softbox and give me a more even light on the front surface. Okay, that clips into place like this. And then we're going to think about settings. So I'm going to be doing a headshot for this particular setup. And if I use the same settings as before, the background would be just a little bit too sharp. So I've switched lens and now I'm going to be using the 45 millimeter f1.2 lens from OM system. I'm actually going to use it at f1.4, which is my preferred position for a good shallow depth of field, but still sharp images. The trouble is, now we need to make this work because I can't just use f1.4, I need to use high speed sync flash. Luckily, the Zoom X, fully compatible with high speed sync flash and a high speed sync flash transmitter like this. So I can just dial in TTL, two thousandth of a second, f1.4, ISO 200, and take a test photo, and it just magically works. This is great. It just works straight away. And if I press the TCM button, I can lock that in as one eighth power. The background may be nice and defocused, but it's also really dark. And that's one of the downsides of having just a single flash lighting your subject. The gap between the subject and the background is enough that it is almost hard to see. So I'm going to add in a second flash and my second flash is yet another Flashpoint Zoom X because, well, why not get two? They are the most popular flash on Adorama after all. Its job is purely to light the background and it's directly behind Sophie. It's on its own separate group so I can independently control it. So the main light, 1 8th power. The background light, I'm going to go for 1 128th power. Now that's not as low as it goes. It does go down to 256 power, but I think with a quick little test photo, that is just enough light, just so we get a hint of what's back there, a bit of separation, and we can see and feel that depth of field much better. Okay, so that's this setup basically done. Sophie, are you ready? Let's take a few photos like this. There we go. That TCM button or TTL convert to manual is a great feature, but I should have said, check in the menu of your transmitter that you're on the speed light setting. So we come to the question that everybody's been asking, possibly, and that is, will the small Zoom X Speedlight fill a large softbox? Well, I've got the Glow Easy Lock 12 by 56 inch strip box, which is a pretty big light. The answer is yes, any flash will fill any size softbox. The question should be, how much light will I get out of it? Remember, I'm after F5.6. So let's find out. Sophie, I'm gonna pop this near your chin. Here we go. And at half power, that's a pretty good guess, F5.6 exactly. So yes, I can get that much light out of it. I've got the strip box positioned way overhead. It's just out of my frame. So that's probably about as low as I can get it. 
Let's find out how it looks. So Sophie, I'm going to take a quick little test photo. This is definitely going to be a vertical picture. And the end result is quite dramatic. We've got lovely down light going on there and light on the front of the wooden box that Sophie's sitting on and a bit of light on the background as well. But I think what we need is just a little bit of separation light coming in from the side. So what I'm gonna do is make use of my second light. So once again, I've got my second Zoom X, but this time I've added the rather amazing grid that you can get for it. I love this grid, it's really deep, which means it's quite directional. So I've feathered it away from the background and this light on its own will just put a bit of an edge light around Sophie and hopefully give us a bit of separation when we fire both lights together. So let's give that a test, here we go. And it does, two flashes, Working together, little bit of edge lighting, quite dramatic lighting from the main light. Yeah, I really like this. So I think everything is set. So Sophie, if you're ready, yeah. let's take a few photos like this. Here we go. Now, just before we started this session, the foot of the box fell off. So I've done a running repair and I'll fix that in Photoshop along with probably a little bit of color adjustment as well. So at the time of recording, the Flashpoint Zoom X is Adorama's most popular flash. And I can see why. It works really well with the accessories kit. Now, if you want to find out if it's still the most popular flash at the time you're watching this video, check out the link below to Adorama's page. And you can check out the alternatives as well because there are rectangular flashes which have more zoom and a built-in bounce card, but this is the most popular. Why is that? I don't know. So let me know in the comments below why you think round beats rectangular. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, just leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, if you haven't already done so, click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.